Hello, welcome uh, to this data assignment. Uh, I'm going to try to walk you through an example. So we're going to, in assignment 1.5, we're looking at using NIMFS data, uh, National Marine Fisheries Service data, and exploring uh, some statistics available through their office. And you'll find the link uh, right here in the assignment. Uh, you'll be assigned a fishery and you'll answer the questions from the worksheet. Uh, you'll be preparing a graph of landings in pounds and value, uh, US dollars from 1950 to the present, and asking these questions. Uh, so we'll use Tableau to, to do the visualization, but first uh, you'll answer these questions in the worksheet after you make your visualization, and you'll actually load your visualization up to Tableau Public, and where it says to include your graph, you just you just include the link to your Tableau public, or you can uh, learn how to create what's called a TwibX file and include that with your assignment. So you have a couple of ways of doing it, and we'll use the link that's listed here to the uh, NOAA website for information. So we click on that, it brings up the NOAA Fisheries. In the NOAA Fisheries, we were looking at commercial landings, not recreational. And we have the year, we have our states, and we can also select regions. So if we just wanted the New England region, we could select that. And then below, uh, you, know, you can see all the, the different regions. We'll, but we're going to be using states for this exercise. And then we can go down to species. And you'll see all the different types of commercial, commercially fished species there. And so I want to cycle through my states and make sure that I find all of them. So I've got Maine, go through Rhode Island, I go back first. Okay, Connecticut will need that. New Hampshire. Rhode Island. We also need Massachusetts. If I could ever work this mouse right, Massachusetts. There you go. So Massachusetts. Now I can select the species I want. And in this case, let's say I want to look at alewives. So alewives right there and then click the chevron to select it I run report uh oh I have an error I forgot to mention the year so I select all the years so I want between these years so I'm selecting all the years and so in order to do that I just click the double chevron it selects all the years now I can run my report. There you go. So now I have my report, which is a nice little format. It's handy. I can sort it. I have lots of information here by location and everything else. And I need to put it in a format that I can use with uh, Tableau. So the way I do that is I go over and I look for, you can see the report types. In this case, I want the default report. And I want to format and download that report. So I go there and I go to download. And I can select the format. So I'll select CSV. So that's a comma separated value file. It's downloading on my Mac, so that's what I use. So I can now open that file, and I'm going to open it in Microsoft Excel. If you use a Mac, you have the option to use Sheets. Uh, you know, it's a fun program, but uh, 
really, uh, especially preparing it for use in Tableau, you're going to need to use Excel. So I just open it as an Excel file. And well, Tableau can handle a CSV file that's straight and downloaded. I like to save these as uh, as XLSX files, which is a Microsoft workbook. So uh, we'll save this as XLSX files, and I'll save it to uh, my desktop because I'm not supposed to, but I tend to do that anyway. So, but you'll see here I've got year, state. NIMS name, pounds, dollars, and in each column on the CSV file means that each piece of data is simply separated by a comma, which is how uh, the computer knows to put it in a different uh, row or column. So I'm going to save it as the uh, FOSS landings, or in this case, AL wives, AL wives, and I want to save it in my desktop because I want easy access and I'll select Excel SX and then save okay so now that this part is done I can start moving over to Tableau, but we're also going to see that there's some data years that are called confidential and some are called public, which means that those years the data was not released uh, publicly. It doesn't mean that there were zero landings, zero pounds or zero dollars. It means that it wasn't shared. And so we'll see what we do with that when we make our visual. So I go to Tableau now. And of course, because I didn't update it right, I have to do that later. So I'll go to my Microsoft Excel. It says connect to data, connect to a file, as you saw in the intro. I connect to Microsoft Excel. I'll select my Alewives. And you'll see it's automatically populated now into Tableau. Now I want to go to Sheet 1, go to Worksheet, and I want to make a map, or a, not a map yet, a graph, showing landings, pounds, uh, and value in U.S. dollars from 1950 to the present, and insert the graph there. So you're going to share that link, or you're going to include your TwibX file, and we'll talk about that. So I want to make this combo chart. So we have state, we have year, we have all these things, and those are in the dimensions. And here's our measures. So I'll select year. And I put that in rows, and I don't want that in rows. I want that in columns. And then I want dollars and pounds. You'll see it makes two perfectly legitimate charts. One shows dollars, one shows pounds, and each one by year. But I want to do something different with them. I want a dual axis chart. So as I look around, one of the things I'll do is take a look at the kind of chart I have. Let's see where things are. Look at my tick marks. And in this case, the, the best possible solution might be a dual chart. I could try to edit the access and see if I can uh, share it, but that's not going to really work all that well. So what I'll do is go over to the show me area. And what you can see in the show me area is that dual combination and we can try that. So we have a bar and a line. Okay, and the line is pounds, the bar is dollars. And I could try to move one behind the other, but 
I don't like that so much, so we can move this back. There you go. And so while that's moved back, I'm going to edit the axis and try to synchronize it. The problem with synchronizing this axis in this case is that that means the axis on the left, the numbers match the axis on the right numbers. The problem there is that look at the differential because you're talking about so many, such a difference in dollars and pounds. Like you have so many pounds of alewives versus how much money they're bringing in. So the combo chart in this case without a synchronized axis is going to be the best method for the visualization here. Next, we're going to have to look and address the bars in there as well as the, as the line and try to find a better coloration for them. I can also filter out confidentiality because remember, uh, we don't want confidential data included in this data set simply because uh, the data is confidential. It doesn't mean that there were, were, were no landings. It just means that, that those landings numbers weren't shared. So it's technically not zero, and because it's confidential, it's not counted. We only want public. So we have a couple of choices. We can just select public here. We can also use the exclude button to give people the choice to just exclude a fishery. So we want to exclude confidential. Or I could just select public. So we click on that. And now I take the filter and I want to show the filter. So that's our filter shelf. And what we want to do is show filter. And so now you'll see the filter shows to the left or the right. And so anyone using this can make those selections. Other thing is I probably like to change the coloration of the bars on this thing. Um, they run together. There's no boundaries or borders and there's not really a lot of showing the, the gaps. We can try tick marks, a few other things. Uh, but ultimately, we're going to wind up using color. I could try tick marks in altering those, um, looking at the tick intervals. You know, these really aren't that great uh, for this case. I don't think the intervals are going to... Uh, be that bad here but to show you uh, what they might look like if I was to shorten that interval that on the major tick marks and I can go one by one that makes an interesting uh, chart it's just too busy. No one's going to get all of that. So maybe the 10 year uh, is the best. One helpful tool here is the tool tip. So as you hover over a bar or a data point, you can edit your tooltip and tooltips will show information like year or dollars or whatever information you want in there. So you can work with that. Some of the other things you can do is you can look to edit your coloration. We want to individually work with those bars. So what we can do is we go to the card here where it says dollars below, where it says some dollars, that card. And so what we're looking to do is get 
boundaries or borders to show on these columns. So if we go to the sum dollars card and then go to color, we can go to opacity and we can play with that to see the bars. We see that there's a little too stacked. So we can, instead of going to automatic, we can choose border and then choose the black outline and then put your opacity back up to 100%, not 99, but 100%. And then what you'll want to do is space the bars by going to size and moving the slider. By moving the slider, what you'll do is you'll narrow those bars so that each year where data is counted, you can, you can see the individual bars. Okay. So we've done some dollars and now we might want to take a look at the line for pounds because that yellow is not really showing up all that great on the blue and so maybe we want to change some colors and take a look and so we can try the markers to show the points that's not helping we can edit the colors so what we would do is select the colors and instead of clicking on just the color square there you first collect on the item or click on the item that you want to change then the color click OK so the blue and the red and then apply and then you can see what it looks like and I don't really like that at all that doesn't seem to be working out so well so what we might do is keep the red line but we want probably a different color for the bar so instead of the dark blue we could go with a, like a lighter color we can't use green because people who are red green colorblind won't see the difference so we, let's try this gray that shows up a little better and then we can also see if we can put labels there but that might not work so well so the label thing probably isn't going to be that effective so we can play some more with the colors i've put the opacity back up to 100 percent and you could try a different color if you wanted. It doesn't look like that's going to be all that helpful. We could play with the opacity a little more. That's actually looking a little better, but a little too white. Uh, so it doesn't really contrast the background. So we want a little more contrast. That looks better. And so the next thing we can look at is label. So we can show mark labels, and we'll see that while these show up uh, for the uh, for the dollars, what's not doing is it's not all that reliable. So in, with such complex data, we could change the color and the font and the boldness. And with the, this data set with these numbers, it's just not working out. It gets a little too crowded. So it's best just to use the uh, tooltip that you can hover over for this information. See if we go a little further white, it doesn't it doesn't quite work out. So we can edit some of the color error on the line if we make that less opaque it doesn't that also doesn't work so great that looks a little better so it's probably best just not use the labels in this because it's too crowded and this is a larger you know, one of the parts of making a good visualization is just getting the styling right. So now we want to make a map version. So by clicking on Sheet 2, we create this new worksheet, this new visual. And what we want to do is go to Maps. We can use the Show Me to see what elements we need for a map. And we need a geographic dimension or a measure, or in a measure. 
So let's start with the geographic dimension, which is state. If we click on state, and then we also click on uh, control click on dollars and pounds. So we have one geographic dimension and uh, two measures, and then we can click on map. There's the map. And instead of doing automatic, one of the other things you can do is under the marks card, you can just click on it. Instead of automatic, you just go map. There you go. And so with map, we now have the New England states, and their color is showing the sum in dollars. And uh, we also have the sum in pounds. I'm uh, sorry, the sum in dollars is size, sum in pounds is color. Uh, size really isn't going to help here simply because this is a regular map. It's not a, you know, that's not really a, a dimension that's going to show much because we're not expanding the borders of the state to show more dollars or few, shrinking them to show fewer dollars. So here, what we will do We can put the sum dollars and move it to label, and now you'll see that the uh, sum in I'm sorry the sum in uh, dollars is labeled, and so and the sum in pounds is still on color, and so here we'll see that we can change the font to make the dollars show up a little better, and bold it. We can play with that a little bit. You could try moving them, but that doesn't always work so well. By just clicking and dragging. I don't like the way that's looking though. You can play with the color if you want, using different colors. I like the blue though, sort of a nautical theme. Now we want to use year and look at this by year. So if I drag year to filters, one of the things I could do is filter by year, but there might be a better way of doing this. So let's not do that. I could see if it would be different if I drag year from dimension to measure and use year that way in the filter. There we go on all values. And we get the same slider. So if we tried that, clicked OK, we get a slider and we would select uh, a range of years, but not a particular year. And so now what we want to do is take year, and if we drag year, You'd see the slider, and if you slide, you would just get a range of years. You wouldn't get a one particular year. So let's, uh, you might try to change the, sound, the sum, the median, the count, average. Um, I think there's a better way. I could take year and drag it to pages. And there, I could click the fade and show history. And what this will do is year by year animate the differences. Okay. And now I want to make a dashboard so that our data consumers can see both. Easiest thing to do is I've named, you just double click and write your name in. So I've now created this dashboard.
And so I can just drag my sheets, my landings in pounds, in dollars by year. And I can also drag this other one, my map. I notice the grade area. So this will show the positioning. So let's say I want to put it here. So now I have a visualization where I can show the landings in pounds and dollars by state by year in the New England region. And I also have this other uh, handy toolbar. But I think I'd like the map up top and the landings in pounds by year. So this gives you a total of the New England region per year for all of those states that your data was public. And this one will give you year by year, state by state. And you can easily move the slider yourself to a particular year, or your users can press play, and it will automatically animate that. So in about 30 minutes, with a few hitches, thanks to my Macintosh and its hotkeys, uh, to bring up other apps, uh, what we saw is we were able to play around a little bit with the visualization. It's also a bit of an art form, and not just a science. We were able to make sort of a combination uh, chart as well as a geographic chart, and then organize data by year and by state. So very rapidly, what you've managed to create is a pretty powerful set of visualizations, and you'll want to share these. And so one of the ways that you can share them is in Tableau Public. And it's a real easy thing to sign up for. And so what I would do is go to the menu bar at the top when I'm in Tableau and I go to server. But before I even do that, I'll show you. Actually, I'll show you why. If I go to server, right, and I go to publish workbook, an error occurred while attempting to save the workbook. So the Tableau server I'm publishing to doesn't allow an external database connection. So remember from our introductory video that anytime you change data or information while you're in Tableau, it doesn't change the source data. So what you need to do is go back to your data source down here. Oh, it's that. And you'll see this connection where it says live or extract. You want to go to extract because what it's going to do is extract the uh, database at that information at that point in time. And because of that, it's going to say, OK, this this is the data set. This is what the visualizations worked on, but it's not constantly updating. So public Tableau doesn't allow you to have that. If you had a, uh, a an enterprise Tableau account like a, for a business or if, say the uh, Noah was actually using it for this purpose, it would have a different Tableau server. But OK, so we've got that part. We've got the extract. We want to save this. So I want to save this as Alewives. So, so I want to save this as Alewives. And because I might want to share this with a friend without putting it just on Tableau Public, that it'll also need to have a, a picture or that extract with it. So I will save it as a TwibX. So when you go to save as, not .twb, but .twbx, TwibX. And I'll, of course, save everything to my desktop and then sort it later. And I'll create the extract for it. So it just extracted the data, and we're good. And so now, And now it's time to publish to the server. So I go to here and I publish my workbook. And I want to be Alewives. And I click Save. And now it's going to pull up my Tableau public. And so I'm going to pull my Tableau public over so you can see that. So tweak the viz, give it a title, give it a brief description. So what I'm looking at here is Alewives. So I want to edit my detail, Alewives. So description. New England region. 
Alewives Landings. Commercial. So commercial. You can add hashtags and everything else so people can discover it. You can tell people where you got your source information, all that other stuff. You can show workbook sheets as tabs if you want, or you can just publish the uh, the dashboard. So here, if we were to do this and click save, this will save it to your public tab below. And here's your the result. So now let's say you want to share it because you definitely want to share this because you've done lots of good hard work and you want all of your classmates to see what wonderful work you've done as well as anyone out in, who looks at Tableau Public. So down here you have this little link button to share. So click that button to share and you'll see that it has an embed code and a link. You can just take the link, copy it, and share it with us. So when you submit your assignment, please do share that link uh, on your submitted assignment. So I can go into your Tableau Public and also uh, see the visual you've created as well. So that's how you do it. Just paste it right into the worksheet and say where it says insert graph, you just insert this link to your Tableau Public. If that's not working for you, you save it as a TwibX and attach it as a file and you can upload it uh, in the assignment. So here we've taken a quick look at how to identify a data source, in this case our Alewives commercial landings, pull it from uh, the NIMPS site in NOAA, work with it, visualize it, and now we can answer some questions. So I hope this helped, best of luck, and I am looking forward to seeing your assignments.